is Douthy Voidwalker, the card that will finally break Mono Black in Legacy. No, probably not, but I'm going to have a heck of a time trying anyway. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben U here for another Legacy stream. Not stream, video. YouTube. YouTube, not Twitch. Okay. Um, today we're going to be playing Jonathan C's donation deck list. Um, I did a decent amount of back and forth with him to build this list. Um, this one is built partially around Douthy Voidwalker. Um, this is a new Modern Horizons 2 card. It is a 3-2 with Shadow. A card would be put into opponent's graveyard from anywhere, instead exile it with a Void counter on it, and you can sacrifice this card to play one of the cards with a Void counter on it without paying its mana cost. Okay, that's sick, but that's where we're just getting started, because we're a rogue deck. I'm a rogue. Alright, so we also have the Thieves Guild Enforcer, and whenever it or another rogue ETBs, under your control specifically, each opponent mills two cards. Why is this cool? If a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere. So... We can use triggers from Thieve Guild Enforcer or discard spells like Inquisition of Kozilek and Hymn to Turok to get really sick big cards out of our opponent's exile zone and win the game with them. Or we can just win the game with our own cards, but that, that's fine too. This deck also has a very small two-card reanimation package. Um, the idea being that you can sacrifice your Dalthy Voidwalker, get something cool from your opponent, and then reanimate it to bring it back and do it again. Plus, you might occasionally get the upside of reanimating something sweet that you took with a discard spell. Um, notably, I think, think it's correct to play reanimate over unearth. Unearth is, sp is better specifically if you're working only with your own stuff because you don't lose the life. But I think the, the two or three life that you lose is a worthwhile trade-off to have the ability to snipe something from your opponent's graveyard sometimes. Um, because there's some pretty sick things that can get into the graveyard with, oh, I don't know, say, Surveil, for example, choosing one keyword at uh, at complete random. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see how the reanimate plays. We are featuring another Modern Horizons 2 card, and that's Sudden Edict. Um, this card's a pretty darn good. Just say no to a threat from Delver. There's one other card here you might not be super familiar with. It's Una's Black card. This is an oldie. Each other rogue creature you control ETBs with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. And whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it deals combat to a, to a player, that player discards a card. Notably, there is one thing that's not tribal in here, and that's Bob. But, like, come on. Like, we're the Dark Ritual deck. We gotta play Bob. It's the law. Um, so we are playing four Mutavolts. Now, what is Mutavolt? A rogue. Yes, so it will uh, get some of the tribal synergies as well. And we are playing a couple of Urborg because um, I don't know if you've looked at these mana pips, but there's a lot of black, black cards. Um, as far as the sideboard goes, we're playing a lot of the traditional mono black stuff. We have Surgical Extractions and Necromantia to deal with graveyard-based shenanigans and combo. We have Plague Engineer, Eliminate, and the fourth Sudden Edict to deal with creatures. And we have an additional Bitter Blossom because, like... Bitter Blossom is going to be absolutely hilarious with Una's Black Guard, and I'm really excited to try that out. Um, anyway, before we get started, please consider subscribing the, to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And if you are subscribed, throw me a like. That sort of thing supports my content and helps out a lot. I know you all enjoy the Mono Black decks, so if you want to try it out, the deck list is in the description, as is my donation information if you want to see one of your own decks on the channel. Alright, let's battle. Okay, uh, let me do a, some quick calculus. Swamp is one. Dark Ritual is three. Bob plus Thoughtseize on turn one. Neep it off. Uh, opponent has taken one mulligan here. Planes. Either vial. The Wasp. The Wasp. Oh, into a Mox Opal. Oh, no, that's it. False alarm. No danger. Or rather, no danger yet. Okay. So there are a couple of different ways I could actually play out this turn. But the way that allows me to make my second land drop and continue to deploy cards is probably by playing Bob and Thoughtseize this turn. I think the Bob is just so important that I have to do it. I will Thoughtseize first, though, because I could change my mind. 
Okay. Well, opponent has has a good card. Opponent has an Urza Saga, and I don't get to take that with discard. I think Stone Coil Serpent having reach makes it the scariest thing here. It could also just be cast for one rather than two. I'm gonna leave the Ravager in hand and take the Stone Coil, and play Bob, and then hopefully Bob gets me some mana, and then I can do this whole like Thieves Guild Enforcer Una's Black Guard type thing. All right. Retrofitter Foundry into Ravager. That's not bad at all. Uh, no box. I'm gonna lose to these constructs. Urza Saga is so frickin' good. Alright, Bob. Land, please. Okay, I mean, those are lands. Enforcer into Enforcer. Or Blackguard this turn. And then multiple Enforcers the following turn. Kinda awkward for me. I think I go the black card this turn. No attacks from me. I guess the constructs aren't super scary if these Thieves Guild Enforcers end up having Death Touch. I think they should. I do not believe that I want to block here. Alright, and there's my opponent's construct. That's fine. We got Bob a Sudden Edict. That's going to be pretty good later. All right, so Thieves Guild Enforcer. Trigger happens. This oh, I can get a sigh. Not that it's particularly great or anything, but I can do it. I get double triggers here. Ooh, I can get an Esper Sentinel. That's not bad. Like that has more real text than sigh. Sigh just has a big booty. Um, if I were to get sigh and my opponent, <laughs> bro. This is sick. Send a list, please. Going to YouTube next week. Okay, um... Finishing the thought. If I get Psy and then my opponent, like, draws a Caracas, that's, like, really not good for me. It's also possible I'm just supposed to use, uh... Thieves Guild Enforcer... Sorry, finishing my thought. It's also possible I'm supposed to just use the Reanimate on Thieves Guild Enforcer. Like, Death Touch something away, and then... I get it back. Yeah, okay. I think I'm going to hold the reanimate, actually. And I'll send in Una's Black Guard here. You don't have to worry about anything with Reach. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Lauren is super into what I've got going on. All right. So I assume my opponent will make another construct in response to this. A second Retrofitter Foundry. That just may be because they don't have too many options. Will you attack into my Death Touchers? No! No, you won't. Also, do these fly? No, these don't fly. Um, this thing can become flying, so that's something that I'm going to have to keep in mind. All right, Bob, do your thing. A Muta Vault. Don't mind if I do. All right, um, I guess I crash in with a Thieves Guild. <laughs> Opponent says you're quite good at Dark Confidant. It's a skill I've practiced a ton. I think I go ahead and crash in with these, because they either trade with one of my opponent's creatures, or my opponent jump blocks with a token, or they discard a card. Oh no, the discarding a card part's not super relevant. Mm -hmm. Back with one? Back with none? Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Just sitting back is bad because my opponent can make a whole bunch of constructs and that gets weird with Ravager and such. I'm going to crash in with these. They have Death Touch. Bob can chump block if both constructs come in. Maybe it's just one. Maybe it's just one. Okay. My opponent does trade. So this is where the reanimate comes in. Let the milling continue. Nettle Cyst, Arcbound Ravager, Nettle Sentinel. Okay. So now in my end step, I assume that my opponent is going to activate Retrofitter Foundry. And at that point, I will cast Sudden Edict. Target you. And then they lose a relevant creature one way or another. I think it's the Ravager? Question mark? Oh, it's the, the Zavaz. I valued the Flyer more highly than they did, apparently. I guess they can get more Flyers with Retrofitter Foundry. Alright, something big is coming. Uncoil Serpent, maybe? 
Oh, walking ballista. That's really good here. I lose two very relevant cards. Oh, you you got to murder Bob, right? Oh, I might be thinking about Ravager, actually. Yep. I think it's Ravager time. Ravager onto Ballista. Hang off Bob that way. That's totally fair and good. Have I become the beatdown now that my opponent's construct is small? Uh, it's weird because Ravager is good. I can hit my opponent for 8. Uh, then they can hit me for 12 next turn. Maybe I'm not the beatdown. Maybe let's make this trade. And then if I draw a sudden edict, I get a sick blowout. All right, my opponent is just going for pinging the other Thieves Guild Enforcer. Yep. Goodbye, Walking Ballista. Yeah, I'll take one damage on the way out. That's fine. All right, Muta Vault. I choose you. We are now in the top deck war. But we're in the top deck war where my opponent has Retrofitter Foundry and I have Muta Vault, and I think my opponent is favored here. Okay. Just a servo. Oh, and a Psy. Sure, sure, sure. Gauthi Vo Void Walker. Well, um, let's toss it into play. It does have Shadow, which is super relevant text right now. All right, so opponent gets a Duder out of their Mox Opal, trading it for the one that was already there. And then for one mana, they can turn that into a Thopter. And then for another three mana, they can turn that into a 4-4 construct. Okay, yep. Oh, nope, going for going for a servo instead. Okay, now notably, shadow is it can block and only be blocked by creatures with shadow. So my opponent could have attacked in there and maybe gotten one damage or force me to activate me to vault. Eh, maybe that attack isn't good anyway. A fatal push. Uh, fatal push, not great right now. Yeah, we can probably use that to deal with a construct a little bit later. But I can't enable revolt or sigh without actually giving up a creature or like without giving up a permanent such as like uh the muta vault. Like I could do a suicide attack in with the muta vault, but that's probably not good. Yep, untap the foundry. That's going to convert a Thopter into a Construct, and I think I just junk that now. Like, the way I die is getting aggroed out by those 4-4s four before I get two hits in. And I don't want to wait until my opponent's turn because of, like, Psy being able to sack it. All right, Mutable. We'll block the Servo. We'll see if they put resources into making that happen. They choose to draw a card rather than use Retrofitter Foundry on it. That's fine. And as per Sentinel. Sure. This Shadow, though. This Shadow is doing work. I think opponent has any creature with Shadow in their deck. All right. They have made a 4-4. I don't get to do anything about that one. Non-creature. Okay. So I can cast Opposition Agent on their turn. No issues there. I guess Opposition Agent has relevant text in this matchup because of Urza's Saga. Please don't be walking Ballista. Oh man. That's not good. That, uh, that deals with this. Opposition Agent can be chump blocked a billion times. Yep. See if they play around Flash Creature. Very possible they don't. It's kind of a weird thing to play around. Did play around it. Alright, well. Animate Muta Vault. I'll take out this creature. I'm going to take the hit from the other one. So that puts me to 9. Alright. End of turn opposition agent. A new Muta Vault. Okay. So this is no mana, right? That's just a 4-4. Four four. So my opponent has two 4-4s four next turn. Um, I do not have a good attack this turn. Might be able to come up with an attack next turn if I draw a removal spell. Yeah. Pass the turn here. Alright, yep, there's the conversion into a 4-4. Four four. Okay, looks like opponent drew something else. Oh, Thought Monitor. That's very good. Like, that gives my opponent two blockers next turn. That makes it hard to win. The Thopter gets converted directly into another 4-4. Four four. 
Um, I need to just take eight and go to one so that I can draw a removal spell, remove one of those creatures, and then swing in for lethal. Yes. Bob. Okay. Um, I'm going to give my opponent enough credit that they are going to block my creatures, and I will go ahead and concede. I mean, we played to our outs, uh, and my opponent made a few mistakes. They they admitted that. Uh, but that ripping that second walking ballista was just so good. All right. Um, board in Plague Engineers, Fourth Opters. Probably eliminate Sudden Edict, Ratchet Bomb. Eyeglass is a maybe. Better Blossom is a maybe. I want things that play to the board rather than the hand, I think. We're both going to go Hellbent relatively quickly. I think that means I don't want Thoughtseize. It, like, both attacks my life. Uh, maybe I want Thoughtseize on the play. Like, how, do, how do I feel about Una's Blackguard? Una's Blackguard is super cute with Better Blossom. Like, I could see going down some amount of this stuff. Now let's include Opposition Agent in the pile of things that I can think about cutting. Like, the Opposition Agent stops the Urza Saga trigger, but it's just kind of like the slowest thing in my entire deck, so maybe that should go. On turn two, like, what, what's more important? Turn one, Thoughtseize, or turn two, him? On turn two, I'd rather Douthy Voidwalker or Dark Confidant if I have the ability to do one of those a lot of the time. Tricky. I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of the thought seizes. Because him still just hits like a truck. Let's see how this looks. Or by mana value. That's what we're calling it these days. Uh, a little heavy. I think I'm gonna play this without the sorceress eyeglass when I'm on the play. When I'm on the draw, I'm going to play Sorceress Spyglass to help with Urza Saga. Alright, uh this is Snow Covered Swamp. Steve's Guild Enforcer on one into Ratchet Bomb or Una's Black Guard on two. I don't have black black. I do have two removal spells to back up my stuff though. Is this fine? It's not great. It is fine. I'm going to keep this. Ratchet Bomb can do some serious work in this matchup. Um, but I do think this one is a little bit borderline in that like I think this very easily could be a mulligan as well. But you know, literal first match with the deck. All right, Thieves Guild Enforcer, let's go. Milled Esper Sentinel and Mox Opal. Ancient Tomb into what? A Walking Ballista. We're just going to trade immediately. That's fine. That's not great for me. God, I wish I could play you. Dang it, Muta Vault. I also wish I could cast him this turn, but that's okay. Maybe I can't keep hands that have, like, two lands and one of them is colorless because I have so many black black pip cards. Yeah, that's there is a saga. I do have Ratchet Bomb to clean up the constructs, so, like, this is not bad. Mm. Everything I love is dying. Not everything. Um, Better Blossom, Ratchet Bomb, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Maybe I just hit with Mutavolt and don't telegraph the Ratchet Bomb. Oh, sorry, and I don't like. I wouldn't be telegraphing the Ratchet Bomb and like not losing a couple of life to this. Now, that's awkward, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, this is not the way mentally I envisioned this hand working out. Oh, it goes to 14. All right, there's a saga, does its thing. My opponent will make a construct, and oh no. All right, it's a Ravager. But do you have another mana source? Oh, just double Ravager, huh? Okay. He's not going for the initial constructs. Okay. Um, the Dark Ritual is interesting. I probably don't want to throw the Ratchet Bomb out there until I actually want to use it. What is most important? Do I want to him the last two cards out of my opponent's hand? Like, him and Fatal Push is a pretty respectable turn. Is this cast or play? Play. I could get my own construct. Probably bad. Getting the Douthy Voidwalker into play to clock my opponent when they're at 12 is legit. I think I'm going to do that. Let's Fatal Push. Blow up one of these. That means that they only get to play the Arcbound Ravager, move the Construct game around once. Alright, and then the Voidwalker. Alright. 
So now my opponent's Urza Sagas will trigger, and they'll activate this one in response to its trigger. Yep, yep. All right, they've just gotten a Mox Opal. That's one more thing that will just die to Ratchet Bomb. I am good with that. Stop it. Please. Yep. You get to swing in this time. Okay. Can I greed for one turn? I might be able to greed for one turn. 100% of the time, I just dome my opponent for three. That puts them to seven. All right. I think I have to play the Ratchet Bomb. Because I'll take maybe five or six damage from the Construct, plus another three or four from the Ravager itself. I think I need to play this. Uh, but the timing is weird if my opponent has a Pithing Needle in their deck. I don't think they are going to have a Pithing Needle in their deck, but I'm going to need to think about when exactly I want to activate this. Okay, let me clarify. I don't think they're still going to have a Pithing Needle in their deck. All right, is this the time? This means that they can't use the Mox Opal for mana. They have to tap the Ancient Tomb. I think this is the time. Like, I can wait, but it starts to get into that weird Pithing Needle dance that I was talking about. So this is going to make the Ravager bigger, and then set me up for a spot where a, a spot removal spell on the Ravager becomes very good. Alright, so here are the Urza Saga triggers. Alright, so opponent goes to 5 to make a Construct. That's fine. I might just get another Mox Opal. Yep. Artifact land. See how much I take here. All right, that's just a land. I guess I can do a pre-combat him to Turok. Just kind of do a check and see what was in my opponent's hand. That's for Sentinel. Okay. I'll crash in for three. Try a chump block with Mutavolt, and then see if I live through that turn. It's a little close. I think I'm ending up on the wrong side of this. Maybe I had to greed and not play around Pithing Needle. All right. So there's another construct. That looks like no construct from my opponent this time. Oh, maybe I should have activated this in response in case there was a Pithing Needle. I think I am dead. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, I had to greed harder. Uh, I thought that blowing up three permanents uh, with one card was totally fine and reasonable, given my, like, two-turn clock. Uh, that was not the case. GG. Okay, game two. No land. Mulligan. Uh, yep. We'll maybe draw a threat later. I don't know that I get to throw back the thing that uh, rips three of my opponent's cards on turn one. Okay. I will go ahead and go for the Dark Ritual as planned. In this essay, I will now talk about the order in which you should cast these two spells when given the opportunity to cast both of them. Not going to talk about it. Okay, um, good cards are good, and my hymn can be countered either way. I think the thing I'm most scared of here is Sylvan Library. I go ahead and take that, and then I think him would trade for Force of Will and Force of Negation, which I'm more or less good with. I could Thoughtseize instead, but they'll still have either Force of Will or Force of Negation available next turn. All right, Force of Negation... Ice Fang Quaddle instead. That's fine. I'll take Force of Will next turn, and then hopefully I draw something that's a banger. I'm down a card in a matchup where, like, you really don't want to be down a card. Don't think I get to give Opposition Agent banger status here, but it's certainly not bad. Uh, that leaves them with an answer either way. I'm going to take Swords to Plowshares. There's at least a world, then, where they have to pitch Uro to Force of Will. I wish these fetch lands happened a turn later. Ponder. More other fetch land. Into more other ponder. No shuffle. And a uh, land hit. Order. I think I just resolved this main phase. I don't want my opponent to fetch land and then be able to fetch in response to my own opposition agent. And like right now, I know that my opponent's blue card that they have is very valuable. Yeah, like, holy shit, we got an Uro for Opposition Agent. Like, A++++. God damn it, what a top deck. Okay, 
I mean, one good top deck deserves another, but, like, my opponent's top deck can find cards for Bob before my Bob can, like, draw anything. Drinking deep from the Sylvan Library. Taking eight. Oh, wow. Pun has a lot of colors in there. Burrow. Allows them to Sylvan Library more and finds them white mana. Okay, well, Bob lived. That's great. And my opponent doesn't have Ice Fang Kowaddle mana. Alright, a Dark Ritual. And a reanimate, more importantly. Bob 100% crashing in there. My opponent has a naked Snapcaster Mage. They have a naked Snapcaster Mage. Um, reanimating Uro doesn't do what you want. Uh, you sacrifice it unless it escaped. Uh, so we're going to take an Opposition Agent back here. Opponent is on a theoretical two-turn clock, but realistically they're not actually on a two-turn clock because like, they can get an Uro back from the graveyard, and then I don't have good attacks anymore. Sudden Edict would be a real hot draw. Another forest? Surprise! It's everyone's best friend, Uro. Who draws toward the Sudden Edict? That's not one. That's not one. Uh, it is a fatal push. Is that worth doing? Feel free to, like, sacrifice strats and then put the Uro into the graveyard, but I don't know that that's really good. I think one of my permanents will naturally leave play in the next couple of turns anyway. I'm gonna pass the turn. Alright, an Abundant Growth. Not that big of a deal. That does explain how my opponent thinks they can get away with uh, their mana base, though. Thundra. I think I'm just going to take this hit rather than jump block. So I'll go to 6. It's a little risky because I do have this Bob in play. Brains from my opponent. But I think finding a Sudden Edict leads to more lines where I actually end up winning. Getting a Douthy Voidwalker down earlier in this matchup could be really good. Oh no. Oh, Abrupt Decay. Sure. Now my Fatal Push is on. I can use that to kill Arrow at the end step. My opponent will get it back, but that means I'm not getting attacked by it next turn. Assuming it resolves, of course. My opponent does have Force of Negation mana available. M. M's not great. Oh man. If I would have waited, I could have sent that to Exile. That's awkward. It is what it is. Am I attacking in? I think I play my stuff first. We get a better chance to see if my opponent has something like an Ice Fang Kowaddle prior to the Bob attacking. Prismatic Vista and Abrupt Decay. Sure. The Douthy Voidwalker can become Abrupt Decay next turn if need be. And need may be because, like, Uro is a thing that's there. A little bit of an awkward way to deal with it, though. Also at four. There it is. Okay, I mean, that was it. Do your thing, Bob. Dark Ritual. Fatal Push. Hmm. I can sacrifice Douthy Voidwalker. Abrupt to case Sylvan Library. Then Fatal Push Uro. And attack in with Bob. That's not crazy. Yeah, I think that's what I'm doing. Choose Abrupt Decay. Okay, I can play this. Okay, so in terms of timing, now that something has left the battlefield, I will Fatal Push the Uro. And if this doesn't resolve, I can Abrupt Decay this. Yep. Okay. Uh, Uro answered two cards back in the graveyard already, though, even after my baby graveyard hate effect. Just uh, riding the lightning in terms of Bob. <laughs> the uh, end game dark rituals don't feel super good. What's the Black X spell? Not corrupt. Rain life? Rain life would be okay here. No abundant growth. That's actually okay. That's a cantrip that doesn't go to the graveyard. Unlike this one. This one gets them closer to Uro again. Oh, oh, new arrow. That's fine. All right, Bob, don't kill me. Okay, Bob is real good at finding dark rituals. Okay, I think I'm at the point where I can't realistically win before my Bob kills me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and concede here. My opponent will have a new arrow next turn. Um, I think I'd rather just preserve my clock. I think because of some of the self-mill that I have, I need to really respect Uro 
So I think I'm going to play like Necromantia and some number of Surgicals. I think my one for one discard isn't particularly great. I think I'm going to get rid of Inquisitions and Thought Seizes for this stuff. And do I want Eliminate for some Planeswalkers or another Bitter Blossom? Actually, Jitte is probably not particularly potent. Let's board that out. And then play this Surgical Pulse. Oh, I still have Fatal Pushes in the deck. Okay, let's bring Fatal Pushes out. They're a little awkward, like when Uro specifically is the thing that you're worried about. Then I can do this and hit Uro or Planeswalkers. I don't know if I want the fourth Sudden Edict, because like sometimes they can be awkward. And hopefully I'm dealing with Uro other ways. I think this is reasonable. Here we go. No land. Uh, keep? Question mark, question mark, question mark. A junk, a sudden edict. I'm hoping to answer Uro via surgical extraction or just not letting things hit the graveyard in the first place. Island? Anything else over there? A ponder. So there is a real question of whether I play him or Douthy Voidwalker this turn. Excuse me? Um, now there's not. Now we have four mana. We can do it all. I think I Douthy Voidwalker first, because if my opponent counterspells, then the counterspell will go to the exile zone instead. There is also a world where I just get six power worth of shadow into play on turn two and say, like, good luck, opponent. Endurance. That's a tasty one to be able to snipe. Although I think Douthy Voidwalker will just be turning sideways every turn. Sure, Abundant Growth. That might mean that this is getting white and gets removed immediately. That is what that means. Another one, though. Okay. Am I comfortable enough in with where I'm at in this game that I can just Surgical Swords to Plowshares and then slam another Douthy Voidwalker when I know that I cut my opponent off of more outs to it? Um, I, honestly, I don't hate it. All right, an Ether Sworn Canonist. Oh, that's kind of interesting. All right. Oh god, that's so many copies of Endurance. That's the full four. All right, so I don't need to worry about Planeswalkers from this deck. Throws and Endurances as primary win conditions. I guess I should take a snip of this. There we go. Off screen you go. Um, okay. Put the Voidwalker into play. And there's a very real chance that this 3-2 will just clock my opponent before they can do anything about it. My opponent has four answers to it in their deck. They have two Prismatic Endings and two Abrupt Decays. Ponder's no big deal. Like, it looks for set answers, but I don't know. They have to dig very specifically for just a couple of cards. That Ponder got Misty. I mean, that didn't get removal spell. Well, okay, like, there's one unknown card, but feel good about my position. Do you think opponent boarded in Canonist because of Dark Ritual specifically, or do you think this was just one of those things where they were like, eh, I have this other card I need to cut. This'll work. It has power and toughness. All right, new Abundant Growth. Yeah, get fived. Ooh, Bob, though. Bob is probably too good not to cast... Like, my opponent is on four removal spells in their deck. Get them. Okay. I feel pretty ahead. Another land from the opponent. Sure. I think that Canonist is potentially a detriment to you. All right. Thieves Guild Enforcer. Um, so I know about an Ice Fang Coatl that my opponent has, so it doesn't really make sense to crash in with a bunch of my creatures here. All right. Well, let's battle. Been there, my shadow beast. So, ooh, are you just passing? Uh, blah, blah, just casting the ice fang coatl now. Yeah, that's fine. Is this a time like my opponent can't counter now? Maybe this is a time to just go ahead and cast this. I have flash cards too. Not like the study things, but cards with flash. You understand. Oh, neat. I have access to a Veil of Summer. So the Thieves Guild Enforcer is not going to grow because of uh, the Douthy Voidwalker sending everything to exile. So this isn't going to become a Death Toucher. But whatever. That's fine. 
I legitimately could mill my opponent out pretty easily this game. Um, I feel like Ether's Cannonist in play. I think I like Ether's Sworn Cannonist in play. It makes it harder for my opponent to string together cantrips. But, like, I, I do have Bob. I'll go ahead and take that hit. All right. That's all they have. New Bob. New land. Battle? I think I'm just battling. Opponent has more Ice Fang Quaddles they potentially have. Would have, I guess. Uh, there's also Endurance. Am I a coward? Might be a coward. Three copies of Endurance opponent passed with five mana. Yeah, maybe I'm a coward. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to attack into Endurance. I don't need to lose a random land or creature here. I will play another Bob, though. We'll chump block with a Bob, if need be. Sure. Is this targeting? Oh, it's a May. Up to one. I think they should have shuffled these cards back into my deck. These were bad draws for me. A Sylvan Library. Sure. Do a land. Okay, I will trade away one Bob for Canonist, I think. Actually, there's a world where I just take this hit and then crash in with all of my creatures on my turn. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. Just, like, leave my opponent dead to Shadow in two turns. Let's kill the Canonist. I'll just take a couple of cards off Bob and assume that that puts me into... A good enough position where I can deal with one endurance. Him to Turok. Dark Ritual Swamp. Okay, not the best cards. I guess it like clears the way and I can know 100% sure if my opponent has anything in hand. Uh, just to force a will. Okay. Um, how do I feel if my opponent blocks Bob? They'll take six and then they die next turn to Shadow. That gives them. Three-ish books off Sylvan Library. Um, I don't hate that, actually. It's quote-unquote throwing away a card, but it puts my opponent into a pretty bad spot. It's find one of four cards or die. I can't draw any extra cards off Sylvan Library. But maybe that was incorrect because of the existence of Uro. Uro buys them a turn. Yep. Oh, they're trying to clock me. Sure, I'll take that. Uh, not that there's really anything I can do about it. All right, Una's black card and a surgical extraction. Uh, really bad draws. So it sort of feels like my opponent has another endurance, and so I should leave back some blockers. I guess pre-combat I will do this. It guarantees that I get my trigger off my Thieves Guild, as you may call it. All right, Force of Negation. So another thing I can do is attack my opponent for three with Thieves Guild Enforcer and Confidant, leaving up Douthy Voidwalker, and Douthy Voidwalker can be Force of Negation, which is kind of sick. Huh, that's super interesting. That line's kind of bad against an Endurance. Okay, it can also be Force of Will, though. Mm, it can also just represent an Endurance. Oh, these are weird things that I've never had to think about. It is, it is without paying the mana cost, right? Yep, without paying the mana cost. Yeah, I think I'm going to hold up the Douthy Voidwalker. My opponent is complaining about my speed of play. Uh, look at the clock, though. Like, we're in the same ballpark, buddy. Yeah, we're just going to mute this person. Uh, other. Rude. I just want to be able to block them. Okay, it is an Ice Fang Coatl. Um, I just let them trade with Bob. Like, using this for an Ice Fang Coatl specifically is not really great. Yeah, I think I'm going to have that, and then ca I can cash in Douthy Voidwalker for an Endurance, block my opponent's Endurance, and then try to swing in for lethal. I think I'm good with that. Weird game. Yeah, that's fine. I would like my cards to be a little better than the things that I have drawn here. On the growth is not doing anything. That's fine. Brainstorm is good, but fine here. Okay, both creatures are attacking in. Um, I think it is worth a mana to see what cards are in my opponent's hand here. Got another endurance. That's really annoying. So another endurance means that I probably need to chump block endurance at some point. And now I'm just in the territory of attacking twice with Douthy Voidwalker. 
So let's just chump block with the Una's Blackguard. I like that. Opposition Agent isn't particularly strong, but it's another potential chump blocker. Crash in with my Shadow Creature. Opponent to two. For sure. Alright. They're at two. New Endurance is fine. Yeah, again, I think a lot of these cards are below average draws for me. I'm not going to cast Opposition Agent now. I don't want to clear the cards off of the top of my library. Off the top of their library with my um, Thief Guild's Enforcer trigger. Yep. And again, I want them to draw the cards that they have already seen. Okay, time to go ahead and cast this. Alright, no good hits there. Um, I guess I'll just jump block like this. I'm going to die next turn anyway, and my opponent doesn't have any burn or anything. Um, this is fine. Like, they either drew one of the Decays or Prismatic Endings, or they didn't. I might be able to finagle something with certain draws. A reanimate. Uh, what can I do with that? My own graveyard. I can get a Thieves Guild Enforcer. I can attack for three. I'm so close. I can cash in for various cantrips. But I'm not sure that combinations of two cards do things either. Did I board in Plague Engineer? Plague Engineer could do things. Plague Engineer, not available. Let's see. Yeah, I think I lose this one because I played conservatively and just didn't attack with Douthy Voidwalker that one turn. Alright, I mean, let's let's Hail Mary. Let's try to brainstorm and see if I can get out of this somehow. Um, that is not going to do it. I will go ahead and concede here. Okay, we're starting round three in the O2 bracket, but I actually feel pretty good about this deck. Um, I'm going to be keeping this hand. The Urborg really brings it together and, like, makes it so that this is a keepable hand. Good luck to you too, friend. Love your content? You're in a video. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, opponent kept on five, so we're probably playing against a combo. Oh. No, we are playing against a Dragon Rage Channeler deck. A Dragon Rage Channeler deck at that that has basic mountain. This may not be Delver. Okay. So this mill. Is this good? It's not great. I think I'm going to play Urborg and flash this in and try to trade with Dragon Rage Channeler mid-combat, but it might not work. My Urborg gets wastelanded. I am in trouble. Okay. It is blue-red Delver. My opponent just happened to have basic mountain. Surveil a land at the graveyard. Delirium count is one. Two once the ponder hits the graveyard. Come on in, Dragon Rage Channeler. The water is fine. I'm gonna mill. Please don't make it big. Alright, we did not make it big. We did add a card type, though. We added instant. Damn. See if we turn it on mid-combat by having them surveil a creature or artifact. Damn it. Oh, man. I am going to reanimate the shit out of that Ragavan at some point. Ooh. Oh my god, my hand is so good. I think I try to take both of the cards from their hand. And then remove stuff later. Wasteland specifically will screw me. Uh, but otherwise, like, it just clears the way for everything to work out perfectly. If I trade for a daze, I trade for a daze. Ooh, expressive iteration and scalding turn. All right, now we just need to dodge Wasteland for this turn, and I think this game is over. Uh, I mean, Delver is a very good draw there. That means the Sudden Edict hits that instead. <clears throat> Excuse me there. All right. Um, uh, still... Well, this is just uncounterable, so I can wait on this. So let's just go ahead and reanimate Ragavan now. And then I can wait until the Delver trigger, and I can figure out what card is in my opponent's hand. Oh, I took Ragavan out of the graveyard, which turns off Delirium. That's super weird. Huh. I was not actively thinking about that. So I guess I should have cast Sudden Edict on my... It's weird, because, like, like, it puts another creature into the graveyard. Okay. 
So this attacks each turn of Avil, so it's not going to block Ragavan. And then Ragavan gives me treasure tokens, which will allow me to cast my black cards. This is a play. I cast. Sure. I'm going to have a Jitte in the not-too-distant future. Deal to that. All right. A Ponder. Do I want to Ponder for removal? Or do I just want to, like, play Jitte plus Voidwalker? I think Jitte plus Voidwalker is just stronger. I know they're going to resolve. Get them. That treasure token was so helpful. There might be something to this Ragavan card. Nice, nice. I'll go to 17. Bob. Okay. If a removal spell happens, I would like it to happen on Douthy Voidwalker, not on Ragavan. I will be equipping right here. Send them in. Oh, it looks like it just works. Expressive iteration. Um, that is a good card, um, but I do have to pay the actual mana cost. This doesn't let you cheat it, um, and I don't have two treasures currently. I believe I am just going to floop an Una's Blackguard into play and call that a turn. It is currently my intention to just block this with Una's Blackguard and then finish it off via Jitte. Um, that may change things. Oh, it was a dash. Okay. Uh, do I want to just trade Una Blackguard for Ragavan and then kill Dragon Rage Channeler on my turn? Three Jitte counters. Yeah, I would be okay with that. I'll still be floating some life. If that's my plan, I might be better off. No, no, I'm going to go ahead and trade this for this. Because there's worlds where I can just draw or find a removal spell and remove Dragon Rage Channeler that way. Okay, Monkey confirmed good. What do we have for Delver? Um, eliminate, Sudden Edict, Plague Engineer, Ratchet Bomb is not crazy. I want to cut some amount of my discard and maybe the Opposition Agents for being slow. So if I were to cut Opposition Agent... And Thoughtseize, because they caught me cut cost me life. That brings me to 59, so I could bring in one Ratchet Bomb or one Bitter Blossom. Bitter Blossom is interesting in that it can be a chump blocker every turn or a threat that spirals out of control, but it's a little rough on my life total. Um, I think that's just kind of the strategy I'm playing, though. I think I'm going to play one Ratchet Bomb. It, it being on one is really strong. Yeah, it's possible the second is correct. No? Ah, uh, maybe, maybe over Inquisition. Makes my turn one a little bit worse. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up the second Ratchet Bomb when I'm on the draw and keep Inquisition on the play. Um, this hand looks solid. I have two basic lands and a whole bunch of things to do on two mana. One of which is an uncounterable way of dealing with a Delver or Ragavan or Sprite Dragon or whatever else. Ooh, baby. So I assume Sudden Edict will be my turn to play almost all of the time. I mean, the exception to that is if my opponent just does not play anything. Um, is this a time where I just wait out days? Could be, but I get so much advantage out of like a spell that actually resolves. Hey. I think I'd be okay trading Bob for days. I'd be less okay trading Douthy Voidwalker for days. Like, this impacts my life total in a negative way. If I trade this for a daze or a lightning bolt, I will take that one for one. Okay, yep, that's fine. Like, on turn four, it's pretty likely that I'll want a double spell, so I'd run into days there again anyway. Okay, well, like, now I've got another. Went in Rome. I'm really surprised that my opponent kept their hand, uh, if I'm being honest. Like, I, I don't know exactly what it looks like, but it seems that my opponent's deck functions the best when they get ahead early. Head hand did not get ahead early. Okay. Get my three damage in here. Put the opponent to 17. And honestly, let's just continue to play around Wasteland. And not going to play around a Pyroclasm effect, I don't think. A little fringe. 
I'm also not gonna cast a ratchet bomb into Daze or Pierce or whatever. <clears throat> oh, just another wasteland. Conan is uh not having a good time here. Okay. But I guess we're now in Lightning Bolt one of these territory. For sure. That puts you to 13. I can lightning bolt later. I don't think that's going to be super necessary. I will floop the ratchet bomb into play now. That's my insurance. Kind of feels like my opponent has, like, delve sort of threats in hand. Play? Play. There is a world later where I can just wasteland them off of Volcanic Island. But I think my shadow threat is pretty baller right now. Charge! Now Plague Engineer is not bad. Crash in. Okay, what am I naming with Plague Engineer? Um, human's pretty good here. Honorary mention to Dragon. Daze. So if they are dazing, it means they have another daze. If I cast Dark Ritual, that just gets dazed. So uh, the Dark Ritual doesn't really do what I want it to do here. But I will just pay. Yep, okay. I mean, exactly as I read the situation. That's fine. I'm ahead on board. I have three removal spells. I have a shadow threat in play. My opponent's dazes and wastelands are not looking good. New Mutavault is uh, not great in the face of multiple, multiple wastelands, but it's something that my opponent has to use a resource to answer. Grr. I'm just a scalding turn. All right, in we go. And I'll play a 1-1. Specifically, it's a 1-1 one, one. that means that my opponent is dead next turn. All right, opponent fetches. This is going to mean hard cast force at will. That is what it means. Now, the fetch does mean the opponent is dead to Douthy Voidwalker next turn. Dragon Rage Channeler is fine. I won't even. <laughs> yeah. GG's opponent. GG's. Uh, let's see, this is round four now. I've kept an opening hand with Thoughtseize into Bob into Opposition Agent or Jitte. That's pretty respectable. Uh, yep, you can shut off my Jitte. Um, we're potentially playing against an alternative build of Red Prison here. Um, there's other options, but that would be my guess. Um, Nathan Lepet's a while back championed this card in Red Prison as an alternative hate card. All right. Womp. Thoughtseize. Let's figure out exactly what kind of Stompy deck you are on. Oh, just straight colorless. Uh, they only have one business card in their hand. Uh, they kept their hand on the strength of turn two card, Arn, and I just disabled that. Okay. So there's Grim Monolith. I assume they're going to... Oh, no. Not going to keep City of Traders around, which to me feels like they drew another land. Land, Bob, go. Opposition Agent, probably not at its best here. Neither is Fatal Push. The opponent can put the Forsaken Monument into play. I'm good with that. Um, in case you're not familiar with this one, colorless creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Whenever you tap a permanent for colorless, you get another one, and over you another mana. And whenever you cast a colorless spell, you can gain two life. Bob gets Thieves Guild Enforcer. Eh. Now, oh, second Thieves Guild Enforcer. That probably means that I just play the first one here as well. And then play Opposition Agent the following turn. And I'm probably attacking for a decent amount with Thieves Guild Enforcer. There's probably no reason that I should play these at sorcery speed, though. Um, specifically, there's cards like All is Dust and Ugin, where if I play them at sorcery speed, it can be awkward for me. This also does technically hold up Opposition Agent as well. Alright, what do you got? A Thought Not Seer. I'm gonna lose my Fatal Push, that's fine. Thieves Guild Enforcer, Mill 2. Thieves Guild Enforcer, Mill 4. Always yield to these. Hopefully not hit an Emrakul and have it all shuffle back in. All right, so now I have a pair of 3-2 Death Touchers. Yep, all right, so there is Fatal Push as expected. 
Finding a sudden edict, Bob. A fatal push. Um, that's not bad. I, I am not enabling revolt currently. How do I feel about attacking? Not with Bob. Bob's too valuable. Could attack with the other ones. Could like just take six to the dome. Maybe I am okay with attacking with Bob. Eh, nah. The thing is that if I lose Bob, I have nine damage a turn clock still remaining in play, which is pretty sick. A two turn clock if I do that. Um, it's a little weird though because my opponent has the monument. I'm gonna attack him with both of these. I am the beat down. And if my opponent attacks me back, then Bob gets to attack in the following turn. Yeah, I'm good with that. All right, Ancient Tomb from the opponent. Yep. All right. They are not able to attack here. And they have one card in hand. Probably very minimal uh, third shut off that I'm actually doing here. Sudden Edict. Oh, baby. That is nice. I will make you sacrifice a creature. Notably, I don't think I should have uh, made a land drop here in case I draw a Mute Vault specifically. Yeah, I did not draw it. So here is most of my opponent's life total. What is this? Oh, just an untap. That's fine. All right, opponent goes to five. I do not believe I am supposed to play out Dowthy Voidwalker because of the presence of all his dust and Ugin. Well. I guess all, all is dust specifically, because Ugin still is uh, pretty good at uh, picking off a 3-2 a after it's wiped. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, that's pretty good. That's something that makes me wish I had played out the Douthy Voidwalker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very possible I lose here. It's mill 20. Or Exile 20. Sudden Edict again? Not a Sudden Edict. Alright. Well, now we uh, have to commit pretty heavily to the board. Actually unclear whether or not my opponent will even be able to attack next turn. I have, I have lethal through one blocker next turn. Oh, please don't like walking Ballista. Thought Not Seer is fine. My fatal push not uh, killing Thought Not Seer without Revolt has now been... Relevant twice this game. Oh, my opponent has more. Uh, that's just very good because of the life total swing. Like the salt model with just being a three mana gain two life. Like that alone is totally reasonable. All right. Got the Void Walker connecting. Uh, does some interesting things. Okay. So Bob. An alpha attack is only worth two extra points of damage, so I'll only be attacking with Douthy Voidwalker here. Uh, which actually can hit some very interesting things. And I get to p play them without paying their mana cost with this card. So, 13. I'm supposed to play another Bob as a chump blocker here. So a little weird, because I don't really want to be taking damage from Bob's. But... My opponent's cards hit like a truck. Oh, please stop hitting spells. How bad is it? Seems like it's bad. Uh, yeah, that's bad. Unless they don't take down the Voidwalker. Okay, they figured that out. <laughs> uh, if they didn't do that, the, it would have been actively quite good for me. I think I am now likely dead. I do wonder if it was correct for my opponent to attack with it first, though. Oh, right, right. Yeah, they, sorry, they legend rolled the other one. Sure. So I think the way that I win this now is, like, finding multiple removal spells and taking out both of my opponent's creatures. So I'm going to block with Opposition Agent here. And let Bob do Bob things. Bob. Sudden Edict. That's half of the equation. Dalthy Voidwalker. I have three Sudden Edicts in the main deck, and I've used the Fatal Pushes. Hmm. I actually have one more Sudden Edict that I have to find. That's rough. I guess we can take a look here. Is the other Sudden Edict in here? Shit, it is. Okay. 
But that means that I have to aggro finish my opponent. I guess 100% of the time I am casting this Sudden Edict. That'll take out the Thought Knots here. I guess I should have Dow the Voidwalker first. Uh, I guess the Thought Knots here can go to Exile. Got four dead cards in hand. This is a little rough. Oh, I also have 16 cards in Library. That's actually the biggest issue here. Um, I just get milled out next turn. Damn. Okay. That that part of it beats me. Ugh, we we're so close on that one. All right. Um, what do I have for this matchup? Not a ton, honestly. Uh, the other sudden edict is good. I think Bitter Blossom as pressure is fine. And then like, there's cards like Necromantia that can specifically answer one of the large threats or like be an out, not an out, a preemptive way of stopping something like All is Dust. I like all of my discard. I think I even like the Inquisition of Kozilek. don't like Jitte. I just don't think that that is doing the things that I need to do here. Uh, Dark Ritual was bad that game just because like I didn't have action, but like when I'm on the play, I really want to leverage and play multiple spells early if I can. I'm going to keep the reanimates. I can I can live the dream on some stuff there. I might trim one Una's Blackguard. Like that card is very good in conjunction with Bitter Blossom, but I'm not sure that otherwise it's good. Cuz like I play out a bunch of the one drops before this hits play. I think I like this for being on the play and on the draw. I can start thinking about like Sorceress Byglass and Necromantia. Um opening hand is turn to Bob or Bitter Blossom. Yeah, I'll keep this. I'm on mulligans. I just start with this, which is approximately the same as just starting on Swamp. Air resistant. Sure. Your heart out, Dark Rituals. Okay. The Dark Ritual does get me to three mana, so it costs two to play Dark Ritual. That gets me to three, and then I can play a two drop. So I will do that. Uh, so the question is, like, which one, Bob or Bitter Blossom? They're very similar. I think I want the thing that clocks harder here. Because, like, I have Mutavault in play already. Let's let's create pressure. Vault Monolith. Sure. When it gets to scary level of a mana next turn. Just a land for me. Um, it is possible that it's correct to just swing in with Mutavault here. Because of something like an Ugin or All is Dust next turn, exiling everything. But I think I want to build my board just a touch more. In the non worst case scenarios, this prepares me better for the future, but this is worse, worse against the worst case scenarios. Alright, what do we have? Uh, it is just Forsaken Monument. I do not know that that is going to be fast enough. I have a decent amount of pressure in play here. And, oh, wow. All right, so I can hit my opponent for three, or I can hit my opponent for five. Um, honestly, I think hemming two cards out of their hand is more valuable than an attack. Not by much, but by a bit. Mu, uh, there is an Olamog in the graveyard. This is not a drill. There is an Olamog in the graveyard. I'm not sure if I get to reanimate it because of where my life total is at. And I also think the game ends next turn, just from me attacking and killing my opponent a good portion of the time. Um, but it's cool. A walking ballista for X equals 2. Sure. I believe you're still dead. Oh, especially if you don't remove now. Then I just set an edict on my turn. Okay. So, set an edict you. Alright, opponent is done with me. All right, on the draw, do I want to Necromantia? It's a bit of a gamble. Like, there are very, very, very specific cards that I care about. But there's a lot of times where I cast Necromantia and it just does nothing. Or it's a four mana play because of a Sphere or Thorn effect. Um, maybe I don't mess around with that. It also Sorcerer Spyglass for Walking Ballista, but eh. Got, I've got removal spells in here. Okay, if there is not a turn one chalice or sphere, I have turn one dark ritual, thoughtsies, bob. 
I'm going to keep on the strength of that. The hand is a little weak if my opponent does Chalice or Thorn on turn one, but there's so many tap lands in that deck that that doesn't always happen. And in those times where it doesn't happen, I get to do this. Okay. I guess I have to take the Walking Ballista, because otherwise that answers Bob. Um, the Sphere is definitely a little annoying here. But, you know, say lovey. So my opponent will, in all likelihood, go Cloud Post Sphere off the Cloud Post. That makes two mana. Okay. So far playing out like I predicted. Oh, they're going for the Maze Mine Tomb. Uh, so they're going to try to scry a whole bunch and find some more action. I think that's reasonable. All right. Let's go Castle. Gouthy Voidwalker. Crash in for two. And need some help. Um, but it's very possible that I end up milling or otherwise taking with discard some big scary thing. And then kind of describes again in the upkeep and then like i win the game with their cards all right there is a naturally drawn glimmer post although my opponent could have played thespian stage and copied it with the cloud post to get a similar effect all right sure sphere of resistance followed by grim monolith thespian stage and one unknown card remaining all right bob give me something good uh, i mean that's no damage but it's not what i'm looking for that's also not what I'm looking for. Uh, that's not good. I also don't think I'm to uh, Dark Ritual, Castle Locked, Wayne, draw a card. I don't, uh, don't think that's living my best life. All right, so opponent will take five going to 16. I will play a Muta Vault and, and just pass the turn. All right, trying yet again. That one did go to top. That, now we... Don't know anything about my opponent's hand. Uh, I think my opponent is in the driver's seat at this point. I, I like I have five, really seven power on board, but like in the grand scheme of things, I really have nothing here. Like I have five blank cards in hand. That would be a sick time for an opposition agent. Guessing this gets Eye of Ugin. There's a world where it gets Caracas. All right, it's just grabbing another cloud post. That means that my opponent has a big scary thing in hand. All right, Bob, I need help. Uh, oh my god. Do we just get to do the thing here? Do we just get to fucking do the thing here? Do I get to thought seize my opponent, and they have something big and scary, and I just get to take it and then cast it for free and win the game? Gotta rub my hands together greedily here. Build up this moment. Okay, I think we've done that enough. Thought seize you. It is a Karn, the great creator. I will take that. Um, I can get me an Umazawa's Jitte or a Ratchet Bomb. Um, honestly, the 3-2 with Shadow might just be better than Karn. It's close, but I can't really defend that Karn if I put it into play. Like, it shuts off these and makes the Golos attack, but I don't know that that's actually great. Alright, so... Use my Dark Ritual as a plus one mana, play Una's Black Guard, and I'll crash in with my Shadow Creature. Man, I was really hoping for some sort of, like, thick Eldrazi. Alright. So, the Maze Mine Tome now sacrifices. Um, honestly, I don't know if I like my opponent's play pattern with the Maze Mine Tome. I think they could have drawn a couple of cards off of this. Like, I think they had the mana to spare, especially this turn. Like, I'm not a pilot of their deck, though, but... I would have rather... When you have as much mana as they have, I think it's just better to draw one card rather than scry. Alright, what do we got, Bob? Another Una's Black card. Sure. And swap. Okay. Alright. So, land. Three. Flyer. This ETB is with a counter on it. I get to attack for four here. Double check myself. Yep, no reach. Um, I also sort of think my opponent could have attacked with Golos last turn. Like, Golos plus Bob is probably a 4 damage turn clock. Whereas if they just hold back Golos, they're only holding back 2 damage, and they're still taking at least 4. Um, no, actually, no. I, I take that back. I forgot about my Muta Vault. Holding Golos back was correct. 
Okay, so now they're just going to turn um, Thespian Stage into another Cloud Post. Oh, no, into a Muta Vault. That's legit. The exact wording of it. Okay, this is still a land. Yep, okay. Yep, sure. Uh, so interestingly, the Maze Mind Tome did not go to a graveyard. It went into the Exile Zone from play directly, so that's why it doesn't have a Void Counter on it, um, just in case you were curious about what was going on there. All right, sure, your Muta Vault is a 2-2. That's fine. All right. So let's turn on my Muta Vault. And how do I want to deal with this? Do I want to take the Golos out of play? I can lose like Bob and Muta Vault or Bob and Una's Blackguard to kill the thing with five toughness. Um, that seems fine. I kind of like Bob, though. I think I'm just going to trade my Muta Vault for their Muta Vault. Then I'll have to keep three, four, five, six, seven, eight damage in play. And I probably two turn my opponent anyway. Yeah. I think I'm good with that. Like I only have two three drops in the deck, I think, right now. I think I have two opposition agents. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure it's correct to keep Bob around. Specifically because my hand is so bad. Okay. I'm gonna take three here. And we'll see what Bob has in store for me. A Thieves Guild Enforcer. Sure. Um, play now because of Douthy Voidwalker. All right, two mana. All right, Mill Trigger. Arn again. All right. Uh, well, yeah, let's go ahead and crash in with everyone here. And hit my opponent for a billion. My opponent will discard uh, two cards from their hand. Very, very strong here. They have my opponent bound a, uh, a haymaker on the top of the deck. If they didn't, I win. If they didn't, I win. What's my record up to now? Is this 2-2? Two, two? All right, we're running it back. We're at 2-2. Two, two. Let's see if we can end it up 60% and go 3-2 for this league. Okay, I have a bit of an awkward hand. I have two Him to Turok's that I can't cast because I have Muta Vault. And I have Una's Blackguard without another Rogue. And... I get Wasteland and I'm in a little bit of trouble. It's possible I'm supposed to mulligan this hand, despite the fact that, like, I have a very good turn to play and a nice removal spell. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Yikes. This is worse. Um, this one is fine. Uh, the five card hand thing is a bit rough. Um, I'm gonna throw back the Muta Vaults, I think. But, like, this one, this one gets a turn to him to Torak. The first one got to turn to Bob. I think, uh, I think the first hand is slightly better than this one. All right, Windswept Heath, Fetch, Forest, Vantid Swarm. All right, opponent is doing something unfair. Uh, so my hand to Turok will probably be good. Uh, main deck's Vantid Swarm, though, is spicy. I wonder if we're playing against, like, Mono Green Storm. Brawl Harpooner. All right. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose up to one target creature with flying you don't control. It gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard, and then you can have it fight. Okay. So maybe a mono green, like, singleton toolbox deck? Question mark, question mark, question mark. All right. Swamp him. I require more information. Brain maggot. Okay. So my opponent is playing a deck. I am unsure of the details of the deck that they are playing, uh, which is a rarity. Like, I can't even identify an archetype here. Probably like a green, black, green sun zenith mid range deck? Question mark. Maybe Fauna Shamans. Uh, I guess I play this. That's weird, because now my Douthy Voidwalker is going to be a small boy. Forever. Well, not forever. I mean, Douthy Voidwalker could die. Angeling. Target creature gets plus three, minus three, and loses all creature types until end of turn. Sure. Uh, so now the cards go to the graveyard. Maybe relevant for my opponent. Okay, there's a Grist. I don't know what a Realm Walker is. Angeling. Use a creature type. Look at the top card of your library. You can cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library. Okay. So is my opponent on? All right, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. 
it's it's spicy. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, another basic land. You grist. So grist poops insects. That is its duty. So it's a gr you can green sun for it since it's a creature in other zones. You plus make an insect minus draw a target creature planeswalker for sacrificing a creature. And the minus six is spicy. All right. So I guess this is a sudden edict turn. Uh, it really sucks that it's a sudden edict turn. But I need to reduce the number of creatures that my opponent has. Yeah, all right. So I try to destroy Grist. And my opponent will chump block. And then my opponent can just like play a new creature. And then clear the board or just continuously create jump blockers. Okay, now they're just going to let Grist take that to the face. That's reasonable. My sudden Edicts are not good against this. The Plague Engineers are coming in out of the board for sure. Paracas into the Realm Walker. Are all these things insects? Is that Are we on the insect tribal? Very straight up on insect tribal. All right. Um, hmm. Okay. I think Insect Tribal is going to beat me at least in game one. So, I attack. My opponent probably just jump blocks. I think I need to start by attacking. Well, this mills slash exiles. I guess I should do it now before I could potentially lose the Thieves Guild Enforcer mid combat. Try to finish it off. Did anything sweet go to exile? There's a grist. Sure. Alright. So now my opponent will like... Well, they could minus the grist and kill my Douthy Voidwalker before I get a grist of my own and we have like tribal insect wars. I'm so glad that I am recording this. I've never gotten to write tribal insects in one of the descriptions for one of my rounds. Alright, it is another crowl. Harpooner. Uh, gosh, that got big. Okay, oh, okay, it can only create fight creatures with flying. Okay, hence the, the harpooning idea, I guess. Alright, goodbye, Douthy. Alright, I would say that my opponent is currently ahead. Um, I have a bunch of ad draws, like uh, Dark Ritual, Thoughtseize, Hymn to Torox. Um, but my opponent has a bunch of presumably like 1-1 one, one, and 0-1 sized creatures. Oh, that's another grist. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just overrun by the swarm. I think I'm going to have to uh, board as many cards as I possibly can for grist. Oh, wait, hold on. Hold on. So the second half of this ability is actually relevant. If an insect card was milled this way, put a loyalty counter on grist and repeat the process. That's... That's what's up on my opponent's side of the battlefield. That's what they're trying to do. If they're trying to maximize on Grist. Uh -huh. So they milled a harpooner and then got to do their thing. Jeez. Then the Realm Walker can allow them to cast Grist from the top of library. Okay. All right. I, I respect what my opponent is doing here. The absolute mad lad. What is a masked vandal? Alright, when it ETBs, you can exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, exile target artifact or enchantment or opponent controls. I am dead in another turn or two. Oh, great. Thoughtsies. Each opponent loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm dead. I am straight up just dead to insects. GG's. Okay. Plague Engineer. Great. Ratchet Bomb's probably good. The spot removal spells are kind of weird. The Edicts in particular are maybe not good against all these insect tokens. I think I don't get to play those. I think I have to replace them with things like Eliminate. Alright, Sorcerer's Spyglass for Grist. And I may even go like Necromantia Deep for Grist. I'm not sure there. Uh, Jitte seems great. A... Opposition agent is good. What's what's bad? Thieves Guild Enforcer is kind of weird. 
because my opponent cares about the graveyard slightly, but it's also good with my own Douthy Voidwalker if I'm able to get a Grist of my own. Am I supposed to go down on... On the on the draw, I'll go down on Discard. Uh, maybe this is a situation of Trim a little bit. Like Trim 2, Una's... Actually, maybe Una's Black Guard is just like funky here. Maybe I do this and then like pick up another Bitter Blossom as a way to just straight up kill my opponent. I could see that. And then on the draw, I'll adjust a little bit and play less discard. Okay. Um, this hand goes Thoughtseize on turn one into Bob on turn two. That's totally reasonable. My opponent went, yes, after the win. <laughs> yeah. And I recorded it too. All right. Swamp. Thoughtseize. That is a lot of Veil of Summers. Right. We got the frowny face. I wanted to get your him. him. All right, we've got like Cavern on Insect to worry about too. All right, um, Bob versus Mutavolt. All right, Bob versus Bitter Blossom. Next turn, I'm playing Opposition Agent. I think I've got enough cards for the next few turns. I think I want to get the Bitter Blossom into play. Oh, there's also Douthy Voidwalker. Is that better? That might be better. It, like, is Ancillary Graveyard Hate for Grist. Alright, opponent just choosing to cycle one of the Veil of Summers because it's pretty unlikely that I will um, cast a him or other discard spell when I know about these. I respect that. Alright, Cavern on Insect. Into the Harpooner. But I don't fly. Okay. Um, I think I just want to play Sorcery Speed Opposition Agent. Like, I know my opponent has a Verdant Catacombs. I don't think I want to play that game. If I just pass holding up a bunch of mana, it's suspicious. I don't remember whether or not I showed Opposition Agent in game one. I've ordered a couple rounds in a row now. Things are a little blurry. All right. No attack. I don't want to trade away Opposition Agent. I would happily trade away a Mutavolt. Get in there, little buddy. My opponent does have that changeling removal spell, so that's something that I do need to keep in mind, but I think that spell was black to start with. All right, so my opponent will take three from my shadow creature. And I think Bob is better than Bitter Blossom here. I wouldn't be surprised if my opponent just cycles the second veil. Yep. All right, I am really far ahead on board. I have some small amount of hate available. Opposition Agent is stopping this fetch land as well as this fetch land. Okay, they just had a Grist naturally. Now that's slightly annoying. Got a, got a big lag spike here. Magic Online break? Magic Online might have broken. Oh, it looks like Magic Online broke. Oh. How did you get five? Oh, okay. Oh, and repeat this process. Oh, God. Oh, oh wow. That's why magic online. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Hello, dealer? I would like a plague engineer. Uh, him to Turok. Not plague engineer. Okay. Um, make a 4-4. Four, four. God. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not, uh, not prepared for what just happened. Uh. All right. Well. Yes. Guess I'll start with him. Question mark, question mark, question mark. All right, just a couple of lands. Play Th Thieves Guild Enforcer now. It ETBs. I'll see if I hit anything cool. Uh, brain Maggot and a Masked Vandal. Uh, you're not uh, an Artifact or Enchantment too, are you? No, you're not. Okay. Okay. Slightly scared. Uh, this Grist is going to fucking obliterate me. Uh, I think this goes Dome, and I just hope that I draw a Sorcerer Spyglass or Plague Engineer, and then just take over the game from there. Like, I don't think attacking Grist's loyalty 
is going to be good because once this creature dies, these creatures don't really get to attack in. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was rough. All right. And I also, my opponent also could have some cards in hand that are um, being locked away by mana costs due to opposition agents stopping them from fetching. So that's. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, I forgot. I, I have to talk so that you can see me just like shaking my head in total disbelief at what just happened. All right. I'm not particularly scared of Brain Maggot. I don't know that I get to cast these Bitter Blossoms this game anyway. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and as I suspected, Opposition Agent was locking some cards in their hand. Well, we'll likely see my opponent double fetch now. All right, that's a nameless inversion killing my other creature, and now some insects crash in. Life's bad. Plague Engineer. Yes, 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 yes. Unfortunately, if I would have attacked Grist last turn, this would have mean that Grist died here. Right. Name insect. Okay. We'll send three at Grist. My opponent could have Dryad Arbor. Don't think I get to play around that here. Um, if they have Dryad Arbor, they probably save it, just fetch it on their turn, and then sacrifice it to Grist, yeah, to get rid of Flag Engineer. Uh, I would really like them to brick on a draw here. If they just draw a land this turn, I think I win this game. Uh, okay. So there goes Plague Engineer. Okay. There is hope for me. Um, uh, multiple Thought Seizes. Um... My opponent's last card, a Veil of Summer. I think I just want to attack in first and kill Grist and then deal with it. I get hit by a Flash Insect, I get hit with a Flash Insect, but I don't want to get Veil of Summered and then lose something else to boot. I should have maybe played Douthy Voidwalker pre-combat so that Grist would have gone to the appropriate zone and I could have potentially gotten my own Grist. Uh, I am going to Thought Seize first. If my opponent has something... Okay, that's fine. They just had a land. I accept two life as a sacrifice. Alright, the Thieves Guild Enforcer triggers... Oh, we took a Fatal Push off the top of the deck, uh, which is great. I have my opponent on a two-turn clock. Unfortunately, there are exactly seven cards in my opponent's graveyard for Thieves Guild Enforcer reasons. Alright, that is a Realm Walker. Fine. Alright, um, reanimate. Uh, I have a lot of things that impact my life total in a negative way here, huh? The, the way I'm winning this game is attacking with Douthy Voidwalker and then attacking with two Douthy Voidwalkers. So I think I leave back both of these creatures to chump block and then don't play any of this other stuff. As long as I keep my life total high, I can also take a line later where I Plague Engineer on Insect and that ends up being really strong. Yeah, yeah. So, Douthy Voidwalker. Do the mill thing. Mass Vandal, Fatal Push. Nope, I don't care about that. I care about attacking with creatures with shadow. Get in there. I believe I will be chump blocking if my opponent attacks in. I don't know exactly what all I'm playing around from my opponent's deck. Alright. An insect. It is a new Grist. My opponent could sacrifice Realm Walker, destroy one of these, and then they're not dead next turn. Okay, they're just going for making some insects. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't beat Shadow. I don't know what the out was there. Okay, we've got to do this again, huh? All right. On the draw, I want more stuff for Grist. It's, it seems like if I can stop Grist, I am I'm good. What was I talking about taking out on the draw? draw? I know I was talking about taking out something. Oh, the discard, maybe? I think a Bitter Blossom can go on the draw. And then... Am I cutting Thieves Guild Enforcers? It leaves me really light on wind conditions if I do that. If I'm bringing in two Eliminates, I could probably go down on Fatal Push. And my opponent does still have, like, smaller creatures that I need to care about. Care about. Um, Something approximating this. It's also possible that I have enough two drop plays that I'm supposed to go down on him to Turok. Or something like this. Uh, Grist is terrifying in this deck. 
Like, it is a fine card normally. Oh, and my opponent's got a banger of a pun. They dubbed the deck Bethesda, by the way, aka Oops, All Bugs. All right. I have a Plague Engineer in my hand. Deep. I also have Inquisition of Kozilek into Reanimate, so, like, that's a thing, too. Or Thoughtseize into Reanimate. All right. Opponent just passes the turn. Um, that sure smells like Veil of Summer. So I'm not going to cast a discard spell this turn. All right, that's why I wanted to cast uh, go down on discard. It was the uh, the presence of Veil. I should have I should have trimmed discard more. Uh, yeah, so I probably should have kept like Una's Black Guards or Fatal Pushes over some number of the discard spells. All right, then stop. Do this. All right, Dryad Arbor. Will I reanimate a Dryad Arbor this turn? Like I might. Just guarantees that I can play Engineer next turn, which I think is more important than just about anything else I could do. It also plays around. All right, opponents at nineteen. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just guarantee either Plague Engineer or Opposition Agent next turn. All right, we have Dryad Arbor. All right, no no moves from our opponent. All right, classic legacy play of Cavern on Insect. Pass the turn. This is this is patience right here. I think I'm just gonna go with attack with Thieves Guild Enforcer and then play Opposition Agent if my opponent fetches. Attack for one. All right, opponent goes to eighteen. This is the this is the game of two incredibly high level players playing meme tier decks and trying to like outplay each other. I I do think I have to go ahead and play Opposition Agent here. Like, I, I need this pressure, despite the fact that this allows my opponent to fetch. And then, like, if I have five or seven power in play, the grist matters a little bit less. Oh god, my opponent has their own Plague Engineers? Sick. Okay. I have four mana this turn. How am I using my mana? Or I can attack for three, four, five... It's possible I'm just supposed to turn my creatures sideways, like fire up the Muta Vault, back in for three, four, five, six, seven. And then if my opponent plays like a Grist next turn, I just slam Plague Engineer and attack again. I honestly don't hate it. If I could double spell, well, I can Riot Arbor and Bob, like Riot Arbor activate Muta Vault and Bob. That's not bad. Let's do that. That's kind of a happy medium. Get in there, my rogues. All right, you're gonna see like an abrupt decay. An endurance, sure, that's pretty good. Yep, yeah. that was not a card I was expecting. This is not an insect. I'm just like absolutely refusing to uh, drop Veil of Summer. All right, go, go Gadget Bob. Would now like to draw a removal spell. If I can take that endurance off the table, that would be great. Okay. Um, I didn't really see that. That was a fatal push just on my Muta Vault, looks like. Just I hit a little lag spike on Magic Online. Womp Yard. Regenerate target insect, rat, spider, or squirrel. Uh, Plague Engineer on human is very good there. Cute mob. Uh, I'm going to take three here. I have to reread Skew Mob. I think it's six lands and something scary happens. All right. You can draw five or more lands, put four plus one plus one counters on it. Okay. I mean, well, this is a good time to hit this. Um, I need more black mana. So, like, I am casting Dark Ritual. And it leaves me with five total mana. So, that is... Why did I... Oh, my God. Magic Online fucking let me pay for my spells that is so fucking frustrating it auto paid using black 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 god damn it now i don't get to him to torak the two cards out of my opponent's hands okay i lost well i didn't lose the game because of that but um my position is very bad because i didn't just get to do that oh uh, that's fucking frustrating oh. all right all right there's a green sun for Grist. And 
game is potentially over because I didn't get to him last turn. That's uh, really shitty. Uh, yep, there's the Grist. Plague Engineer crashing in. I think I need to trade my Muta Vault for that. Um, it is not feel-good territory, um, but, like, I... Oh, right. Their Plague Engineer means it's a 1-1. Okay, yep, not trading that. All right. So, Plague Engineers trade there. Now I probably just get a Veil of Summer. All right. Cast him. Yeah. Yeah, I 100% lost this game for not being able to cast my spells last turn. That sucks. All right, so we'll attack and kill Grist. So frustrated that MTGO auto paid. Black, black, black for Engineer last turn. So I couldn't do that when you were tapped out XD. I'll make 3 down to 12. Alright, it is a Rain Maggot and a New Grist. That both uh, appears simultaneously for me. I'm lagging a little bit. Necromantia is late. Um, I think I am comfortably at the point where I can concede to this game. GG's. Alright, so we ended up 2-3 in, uh, in this league. And let's X out of that. Here's my 50 play points. And I think we end up 3-2. I, like, I think I win that game if Magic Online doesn't auto-pay like that. Uh, but, you know, say la so it goes. I'm past it. Um, overall thoughts on the deck list. Awkward. So... Thieves Guild Enforcer requires cards being in the graveyard, and Dalthy Voidwalker keeps cards from going to the graveyard. And there's some negative synergy there. Uh, Una's Black Guard never, I think, caused an opponent to actually discard a card in the entire league. Um, I think this deck needs to go in one of two directions. I think the deck either needs to cut Dark Ritual and be a blue-black deck with more rogue synergies. Uh, like, I know there's a historic rogues deck and a rogues deck from multiple other formats that uh, that sort of, like, really leans into the, the mill stuff. Or I think you need to step away from the tribal stuff. Just, like, cut these cards and probably these as well. And just try to be a mono black control deck that gets some other threats in there instead. There was there was definitely this this tension in in what the deck was trying to do. Um, this deck was not a bad deck. Uh, like the the results here aren't aren't the best, but we almost went three two. Like that's 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 pretty darn good for a a brew. Um. I, I like the cards that I have access to. It does have a little bit of the, like, mono black or dead guy ale sort of problem where sometimes you draw the wrong half of the deck, but uh, overall I have a positive impression of this deck, despite the end being a little disappointing. All right. Uh, I, I don't think I have anything else to say here. This, the sideboard tools were fine as well. All right, if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. That helps me out a lot. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And if you want to give this list a try and adapt it for yourself, check out the deck list in the video description. Have a great rest of the day, folks, and the donation queue is always open if you've got something spicy for me.